Hi, I'm Rob Cosman, welcome to my shop. If your plane doesn't work like this, pulls off a nice silky smooth shaving, just exactly how you would expect or hope, I'm gonna go through the reasons your hand plane may not work for you and hopefully you'll solve the problem and you'll be able to do this. Stay with me. One of the most enjoyable things to do in the shop is to craft wood with sharp edge tools by hand. And of course, I most often think of the hand plane when I think of that. I, I just love, love the sound, I love the feel, I love the smell, everything about it. It's stress relieving, it's relaxing, <laughs> unless your plane's not working. And then it's a real source of frustration, almost making you want to quit. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been teaching it for almost as long. And being able to go through and figure out why your plane is not doing what you want it to do and being able to solve that problem is part of the process. Most folks get into this as a hobby without any real instruction. They watch some videos, read some books, and then they've got to figure it out on their own. So I'm gonna go through and I'm going to show you what I would consider to be the most common problems that prevent people from being able to get the most out of their hand plane. So when I'm teaching a class, a lot of it is time is spent problem solving. And uh, when I see a student struggling with the performance of their plane, first thing I do is consider the sharpening. It's almost always the problem. First, I want to show you what a sharp hand plane does. Now, it'll, perform a, it'll provide a shaving like this. So what I'm showing you is a shaving that took off the outside edge, which is nice and well-defined. And then if you look over on this side, it just feathers off to nothing. That enables you to overlap with another pass and then not be able to feel where that mark is. If you do it right, you should be able to plane your board and go right to your finish, no sandpaper. Now, knowing how to sharpen is a big deal. It's the key to making all your edge tools work. It's literally the gateway into hand tool woodworking. I did a video entitled 32 Seconds to Sharp, and that's literally what it takes. So I'm not gonna show you here, but I'll make reference to that. We'll leave a link down below. I showed you what a good hand plane, a good sharp hand plane can do. And I've often asked, well, how do you tell when it's really sharp? Well, you know, you can, there are people that will shave the back of their arm, which I don't think is a good idea. Some do it with their fingernail. The best way is actually to put it in the plane and then try it. It should pull a shaving off with just the weight of the tool. You shouldn't have to put any downward pressure. If your blade is sharp enough, it'll do it. If you're having to really grunt and groan in order to get that thing through the wood, there's something wrong. Minimal pressure. I'm essentially just pushing forward and balancing the plane a little bit. But when you get it right, you'll know it's the sweetest feeling. Mesmerizing. Check out that video, 32 seconds to sharp. Make sure you have the right gear as well. Uh, I tell people, and yes, I sell sharpening equipment, but it's real simple. If you get the gear that I use, follow my instructions, why wouldn't it work for you? It's when you try to use your grandfather's old oil stone he left you, and it doesn't seem to work the way mine does, well, it could be the equipment, not the user. Anyway, sharpening, number one. So assuming sharpening is not the issue, the second most common problem I see is blade is not parallel to the sole. So this thing is called your lateral adjustment lever. And that helps to position the blade in relation to the sole. So ideally, if you look down there, you should see the same amount of blade going from side to side. Now, if you've got the blade just right, as I show you in the video on sharpening, and you've got it set up properly in your plane, you should be able to take an equal amount of wood across the width of the plane. 
So if I measured it, this should be the same thickness here as it is here. And as I mentioned, your blade needs to have that feathering on the outside corner so that you can overlap. Watch what happens if the blade is not. I'm gonna tilt it a little bit. I make a pass and all the material is coming out on one side and I can feel a real heavy ridge right there. Well, you go across the board like that and you're gonna end up with a whole bunch of ridges and you're not going to get the results you want, absolutely. Then you feel your hand and it's, oh my goodness, what are all those sharp edges? Now, the way I do it is find a light colored background, wipe the bottom of the sole clean, only wipe in one direction, and then tilt it just a little bit down so that you're looking at the entire sole, but if I were to measure, it only looks like about a half an inch from here to here. Then I'm gonna use my lateral adjustment lever. This is down here underneath and I'm gonna turn it as I'm looking at it from behind in a clockwise rotation, and that's gonna bring the blade up. Now, I'll bring it up a fair amount. Again, wipe that nice and clean. And as I sight that, I see more on the left than I do on the right. So I'll make my adjustment by taking my lateral adjustment lever and pushing it toward the side that is the highest, so in this case, the left side. And as I push it, I'll watch that blade shift. Now. At this point, where it's sticking out quite a bit, I can only get close. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to retract the blade, and as I get closer and closer, meaning the blade's pulled in more and more, it's gonna allow me to go in and make an even finer adjustment because I literally have a little bit of blade here but nothing over here, so a very small, small adjustment. When I think I've got it right, I'm gonna retract the blade entirely. Now. My next move is to actually put the plane, I'm gonna switch this around and put it in the vise so I can work on this edge. I'm gonna start planing, and while I'm planing, I'm gonna start spinning this adjuster knob, and I'm gonna to watch to see where the first bit of shaving arrives. And that'll tell me how my blade is positioned in my plane. Yeah, I'm gonna go a little bit more, meaning I'm gonna advance a little bit more. Uh, that looks to be pretty even. Now, if the shaving was diving off to the right, I'd say the, shave, shave, the blade is too, is too low on the left side, meaning the wood is really thick on this side of the shaving, and it causes everything to go over toward the thin side. Of course, the opposite would be if it was going off to the left. On straight grain wood, it should come out and pretty much stay parallel to the direction I'm planing. And that's all there is to it. You really have to develop the ability to sight down there and see that the blade is projecting uneven on one side or the other. Once you get that, it's a, uh, it becomes really easy. Now there's one more thing you can do, and I'm gonna show you a little device that we've come across that will really help. So this is a device that's designed to measure how much your blade is projecting. So I've turned it on, it's got a magnetic base, I'm going to set it right here, and I'm going to zero that in, and then I'll move it over until it's touching the blade. Now it's showing 3,000, 3.5 actually, and I'm going to move it over here, and that's 3.5, so it's right on. Now if that was off, I can make an adjustment, use this to measure it, get it really close. I think you really need to do the fine adjustment down here on the actual board by watching the shaving to tell which way is it going, to my left or to my right. And then you can dial it in so that it's absolutely precise. And when you're doing the wide panel, you want it to be right on so that you can have those overlapping passes, no marks where one pass overlapped another. And then, as I mentioned, you can go right literally to your finish, skipping all your sanding. So the next uh, issue that I frequently see is actually a result of the blade not being sharp enough. But somebody new doesn't realize that. So what they end up doing is they keep trying to get a shaving and it won't pick it up, but it won't pick it up primarily because the blade is dull. So they have, end up having to have the blade sticking way out and then you're trying to remove this huge shaving and it just jams in there and becomes a real slugfest. 
This next one, uh, I sometimes can't believe it happens, but it actually probably happens 15, 20% of the time. But it's more a problem with the new style blade and chip breaker than it is the old. Let me show you what I mean. The old style chip breaker had a bump on it. So it's quite easy to tell the difference between the blade and the chip breaker. The newer style, the chip breaker and the blade look a lot alike, except for the fact that uh, in their length. But if you look at them this way, I can understand how this happens. What I'm saying is what this is what will occur is people put the chip breaker on and they end up moving it too far forward. I'm actually going to back this off a little bit so I don't wreck that edge. Instead of having the chip breaker close to the edge, they actually end up having the chip breaker over top of here and they've got the blade close to the edge of the chip breaker. Now, <clears throat> the, the first thing you're going to notice is that your actual planing angle, remember your blade sitting at 45 degrees, and if you've got 25 degrees on the bevel of the chip breaker, you're actually planing the wood at 45 plus 25, 70 degrees, and that's a real hard push, so it's going to be a bear to try to put, push through a piece of wood. But it'll also usually tear up your chip breaker because this is not anywhere near as hard as the actual blade. So, and the question is always asked, well, how close should I get it? I'm not a huge believer that this makes a big difference, but I will typically put it right about there. So about a 32nd of an inch back from the edge. And I don't think there's any improved performance, prove me wrong if you want, moving it any closer. And then, as I said, with the old style, it's easy to tell because you've got that hump, but held back about a 36th of an inch, 36, 30 second of an inch from the edge, and it'll do the job. Now here's another one that we commonly see, and it's just a matter of not assembling this properly. So if you take your lever cap out, You've got your chip breaker attached to your blade. Now, I didn't mention this, but this really needs to be tight because part of the adjustment <coughs> affecting the blade is done through the chip breaker. So if this screw is not held, holding these two pieces snugly, this will move instead of bringing the blade with it. What I'm referring to is the yoke, this piece right here that adjusts to the adjuster knob down here. This pushes on that little slot and either makes the blade come out for a thicker shaving or retracts it for a thinner shaving. Assuming you've got this together properly, when you put this in the plane, first thing I want to do is make sure that the face of the frog is nice and clean. Don't want any debris on there. Now there's three points of contact. There's the blade sitting on the face of the frog. There's the yoke, this little piece right here, going through the blade, making contact with that slot in the chip breaker. So that's why your, can't, your blade can't be too thick because if it is, this won't come through far enough to make this engagement to give you your full range of motion. And then you have this. This is a lateral adjustment lever and this little round piece fits in this long slot in the blade. And that's what allows the lever to pivot the blade like this so that you can adjust to get the blade parallel to the sole so you're removing the same amount of wood across the width of the shaving. Sometimes when people put this together, they've got that skewed off to the side, they set that in, and that's not seating properly. They put the lever cap on, and then they try to make adjustments and wonder why it doesn't work properly. So I always put it in place, move this over, and just kind of tap it and look on the side. When everything is properly seated, you know you've, where you need to be, then put your lever cap on. And the lever cap needs to have enough pressure that it won't allow the blade to move accidentally, Nah, it could be a little bit tighter than that, but you need to have enough uh, slop in there that you can actually make the adjustment and have it stay put. So I usually judge it based on this, how much effort it takes to push that lever cap. And by the way, I always push and pull. I'm pulling on the lever cap. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm pulling on the lateral adjustment lever. At the same time, I'm pushing the blade. I find I get a lot more control as opposed to just taking this and trying to move it one way or the other. Now this next one is not as big a problem, but it still surfaces occasionally. And that is that the frog has just not been properly tightened. And as a result, it's sitting in there loose. So I'm show you what I mean. 
I'll take the lever cap off, remove the blade and chip breaker. So this is the frog, and there are two screws right here. Holds it fir firmly to the sole of the plane. plane. There's a single. Tighten these up. Put everything back in place. The lever cap on. But make sure everything is nice and tight. You don't want anything loose. You want everything to be nice and solid so when you're planing through the wood, nothing vibrates, nothing moves. Now, this last one, the last one we're going to talk about is a little more difficult to deal with, and that is the flatness of the sole. If your plane has a bump in it, meaning it's conve concave on the bottom, convex, sorry, it's not going to work. You don't want it to be too concave either. Uh, sow and a half over the length of the sole is probably ideal. So to check it, I'm going to leave the plane under the tension of the lever cap. But I'm going to pull the blade in. Now you're going to put this in the vise. I don't want to squeeze it excessively. And you can do this with relatively inexpensive equipment. Just set that in there so that it's sitting up on the top. Get a reliable straight edge, and you may have to spend money in order to get one that's accurate. I took a piece of wood, and I just cut a slot in it so that when I put this in like that, it'll stand up. I'm using a, uh, a feeler gauge. It's a thou and a half, and I'm going to check this in three places. Out here, I should be able to move the steel rule when I slide this on all three places. So I... Yeah, that one's a little bit fishy, especially since my feeler gauge is got a lot of crinkles in it. And I can say it's probably somewhere between a thou and a half might be as might be out as much as two thou, but it'll still work. Wouldn't want to go much more than that. The British standard for bench planes used to be plus or minus three thou, which I think is way too bad. But if you can get it close to uh, a thou and a half, it'll perform. And you can always tell if your blade is sharp and everything else is set up right and it's not holding a shaving from one end to the other, then obviously there's something wrong and it's a good chance it's because the side's out. You also want to check the sides of your plane to make sure that they're square to the sole. I, and I use my shooting board every time I use my plane. And you want that side to be square so that when you're setting it in your shooting board, and you put your square on here, you're getting a good readout there as well. Go through all of those. And if you still can't get your plane to work, buy a belt sander. If you like my work and enjoy my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos and help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the link below, the chisel and plane icon, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our online and in-person workshops.